Hey everyone, so I think we can all agree that Wii's are pretty cool, right? Well, pack up your USB hard drive because we're breathing new life into this console. So what are some benefits of modding a Wii? You can back up your disc games onto an external hard drive and play them off said drive. You can once again play games such as Mario Kart Wii Online via Wii-Fi. You can use cheats, not an online games please. You can have lots of saves for lots of different games using Eminem. You can customize the look and feel of your Wii, and so much more. But before we start, I'd love to thank Wii.Guide for being my source of information. Like seriously, everything on their website is so well documented and it really helps me out. So if you like this video, be sure to thank them. I'll also split this video into multiple sections, so you can skip over some stuff that you maybe don't want. But I'd still highly recommend doing everything. Alright, without further ado, let's get right into it. So, what you'll need in order to mod your Wii is the following. An up-to-date Wii running system menu version 4.3, any kind of USB drive, albeit a flash drive or a hard drive, but I'd highly recommend the hard drive, so you can store lots more games than other homebrew on it. An internet connection if you're going to use the SDR2 hacks exploit, which I highly recommend you use by the way as it's the easiest. An SD card if you're going to use the letter bomb exploit, and or also want to install boot me, and a little caution as to not potentially break your Wii. As for Wii Minis, you'll need to follow Wii.Guide, as I don't own a Wii Mini, so I can't help you out there. So, before we proceed with installing any homebrew, we'll need to partition our hard drive so that it has an NTFS partition for our games, and a FAT32 partition for our homebrew, and potentially later down the road some GameCube games if you have a backwards compatible Wii. Now, I'd recommend allocating 50 to 100 gigabytes to our FAT32 partition and the rest of the NTFS partition, which we're going to be storing our games on. As for flash drives, I just recommend to format the entire thing to FAT32. Next, we're going to download Wii Backup Manager, which is a program that configures your hard drive for the Wii Backup File System, WBFS, which Wii games use. And it also does not require you to format your hard drive into WBFS entirely which WBFS Manager, an older program, used to do. Once it's open, pick the drive letter of the main partition of your USB hard drive, in this case, the 1.4 terabyte NTFS partition. It'll tell you that a WBFS folder hasn't been created yet. Click yes on that. Once it's done, you can exit out of the program. As for now, we need a few more preparations before we proceed with installing the USB loader. The Homebrew channel is a hub for all custom Wii applications, which range from USB loaders, to media players, to CIOS installers, and even some custom games. In order to install it, we must use one of two main exploits, str2hacks or letterbomb. For this video we'll be using str2hacks. You can once again find instructions for a letterbomb on Wii.guide. So once we're in the system menu, we'll need to navigate over to the settings and establish an internet connection if not already established. Once you've connected your Wii to the internet, you'll want to change your connection settings. Modify the auto-obtain DNS setting to no, and go to advanced settings. In the primary DNS text box, type the following IP. 97.74.103.14 And as for the secondary DNS text box, type the following IP. 173.201 0.71.14 You'll then want to go through with the connection test. If the connection test was successful, select no to skip the Wii system update. You'll want to exit out of the settings and then go back to into the internet settings 
go to user agreements and click yes. If you see rainbow dash on the screen, good job, you successfully activated SDR2 hacks. But don't get too ahead of yourself just yet. Don't press any button and wait one or two minutes. After that, a bunch of text should come up. After a while, you'll see a hack me scam warning. Press 1 on your remote to continue when it gives you the option. The hack me installer should now load. Now go ahead and press A on the continue button. Navigate to install the homebrew channel with your d-pad and press A. Press yes continue. Once it says success, press continue. If you have an SD card, slide that in and install boot me as well. You can proceed to exit out of the installer. That should now take you to the homebrew channel. Congratulations, you have successfully modded your Wii, but we aren't done yet. We'll also proceed to install brick protection, a USB loader, and some games onto our hard drive. For now, we'll need to install preloader on our Wii in order to protect the Wii from bricks, such as theme bricks or banner bricks. So, download the archive in the description below and, ext and extract it onto your hard drive on the root of the FAT32 partition. Once that's done, plug the USB drive into your Wii. Then, go to the newly installed homebrew channel, press 1 on your remote, and choose USB device. If you don't see the newly extracted apps, then look for preloader and open it. Once you see a black screen with a warning about preloader, press plus on your remote or A on your GameCube controller. Once it says update done, press A to return back to loader. Go ahead and press A on the Wii remote. Now turn off your Wii. Once it's turned off, hold down the reset button and press the power button and keep holding the reset button until the preloader menu comes up. Go to system menu hacks. I recommend you turn on the following hacks. Block disk updates, block online updates, region free everything, move disk channel, force the disk games to run under iOS 249. After that's done, press save settings. Once it says it saved the settings, press B to go back to the preloader menu. Once that's done, you can exit out of the homebrew channel or the system menu. So before we install any USB loader, we will first need to install some CIOSs. The CIOS has modified firmware that, in this case, allows your Wii to communicate with USB storage devices and especially play games off of USB drives, which is exactly what we want. Open up the homebrew channel. Search for D2X CIOS installer and open it. Once it loads, press any button to continue. Select CIOS V10 Beta 52, D2X V10 Beta 52. Select iOS Base 57. Select CIOS Slot 249. And select CIOS version 65535. Press A. Press A again to install. Once it's done installing, press A to return to the installer. Set the options to the following. Select CIOS base 56. Select CIOS slot 250. Once again, press A twice to install. Once it's done, press A to return back to the installer. Select CIOS base 38. Select CIOS slot 251. Once it's done, press A to install. Once it's done, you can exit out of the installer. You're now done with CIOS installation. We can now move on to the USB loader. Go to the homebrew channel if not already on the homebrew channel. Search for Wii Mod Lite and open it. Once it opens, go to WAD Manager. Choose USB Mass Storage Device. Look for the USB Loader GX WAD and install it. 
I have my personal wads here, so that's why there's so many for me. There won't be as many for you though, so you should be able to find it easily. Wait for it to finish. Once it's done, press A to continue. Press B and then press home. What this just did is it installed the USB Loader GX on your system menu. And you can now open USB Loader GX directly from the system menu without having to go through the homebrew channel. You can now open USB Loader GX. Once it opens, you'll find that it has no games. What you have to do now is insert a game disc and it should give you a pop-up that it says it detected a disc. Click install game. It should now start backing up the disc game onto your external hard drive. Once it's done, you can press 1 to, to download cover art for your disc as to make it a little more lively. If you inserted the disc before starting USB Loader GX, you can click the little plus in the bottom left corner. And when it asks you to, uh, if you want to install a game, then press yes. However, I cannot do that because this Wii's optical drive does not work properly. And I'm using pre-existing backups that I made on another Wii. You can also install pre-existing WBFS files from your computer using Wii Backup Manager. Weemfy is an unofficial private server that replaces the now defunct Nintendo Wi-Fi connection service. You can activate it from within USB Loader GX in the game settings. That's pretty much it. Next section please. As for Reconnect24, things get a bit more complicated, so you can skip it if you want. You'll need to download a Reconnect24 patcher script, download the .bat if you're on Windows, and download the sh if you're on Mac slash Linux. The instructions may be slightly different, so I recommend you to go to wii.guide slash reconnect24 just to be safe. Alright, so run the script. If it says it didn't detect an SD card, then that's fine. Press any key to continue. Press 1 to start patching. Patch the Wii. Press 1 to install Reconnect24. Choose Installation Type Express. As for your region, it's the last letter after your system menu version, so 4.3e is Europe, 4.3u is US, and 4.3j is Japan, so choose that one yourself. And now you'll have to wait a while for the files to get patched. After it's done, go to the directory you ran it in, and look for a folder called reconnect24.sh slash files. Go to that folder. Inside it you'll find a copy to SD folder. Once again, go into that folder. You can now plug in your hard drive, and copy the contents of this folder to the FAT32 partition. You can now safely unmount the hard drive, and go back to your Wii. Once again, boot up Wii Mod Lite. Go to WAD Manager. Select USB Mass Storage Device. Look for the following, and press plus on each. Everybody Votes Channel. Forecast Channel. iOS 31. iOS 80. Me Contest Channel. News Channel. And Nintendo Channel. Once all of them are selected, install them. This will take about 2 minutes, so yeah, I'll skip to when it's done. So once it's done, exit out of Wii Mod Lite. Go into the homebrew channel, look for Reconnect24 Mail Patcher, and open it. This should take about 10 seconds, after which you should press the home button to be taken back to the homebrew channel. Go back to the system menu. Go to settings, go to page 2, and go to internet settings. Click on your connection, change settings, set auto obtain DNS to no, if not already set, and go to advanced settings. For the primary DNS, type the following, 
1.106. For the secondary DNS, type the following, 1.1.1.1, or 8.8.8.8, .8 if you're having troubles with 1.1.1.1. .1 Save the settings. Press OK to perform the connection test. It should be successful. As always, refuse the system update. Go to the internet sections, user agreements, and click yes. Reconnect24 recommends you read through this, so do so. Once you're done, click agree. Congratulations, your Reconnect24 has been successfully set up. So, if you've come this far, congratulations, you've successfully modded your Wii. Now it's time to pop in some games and celebrate. Jokes aside though, I really want to thank you for making it this far into the video. It really means a lot. If you did enjoy this guide, please leave a like and subscribe. If you have any feedback, please leave it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching.